I'm just sitting here waiting for my dad to get off the phone. Cause he's a loud talker. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some five star predictions that I currently have. But first, as I've been doing lately, I'm going to talk about the book Spotlight. And today's book is none other than Crank by Ellen Hopkins. Now, I don't know if you guys have read this. It's an older book. Um, it was published in 2004. And I don't know if you're familiar with Ellen Hopkins and how she writes. She writes in like verses, stanzas, things that look like this. Sometimes it'll look like well, there'll be a word there, some words over here. It'll be a jumbled mess. It all depends on what she's writing. And she always ends up writing like hard hitting YA contemporaries. There's a lot of trigger warnings that come with her books. So just kind of be forewarned, kind of go in looking at the trigger warnings before you decide to read one of her books. This book is actually the first in a trilogy and it follows this girl, Christina, who ends up moving in with her father um, because her parents are divorced. And trigger warning for drug use. This book is based on um, Ellen's daughter's real struggle with um, meth. So in this story, this girl um, gets addicted to meth and it just kind of shows you like the spiral that happens when one does get addicted to it. Um, there's like I said, there's three books total. The first two books are about her. And then the last book is called Fallout. And it shows you the fallout of what happens. She's much older now in that book. And it sh um, follows her three children who none of them live together, but they know of each other. Um, they all have different fathers. and They live in different parts of you know the United States and things like that. So just kind of be forewarned going into any of her books that they're very hard hitting. I loved these books growing up. I absolutely loved them. They're really fast reads, but they're really intense reads. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now on to my five star predictions. Um, I was just perusing through my Goodreads as one does. And I was just thinking to myself, which one of these do I think will be a five star? And I've seen plenty of people on booktube do like five star predictions. So I'm like, I'm basic. I like to follow the herd. Why don't I just go ahead and do one too? You know what, Michael? You're basic. So I wrote down a list of eight different books that I think I will give five stars. Not that they were ever like given five stars by other people, but this is just what I think. Um, I'm gonna start with the three that aren't out yet. There's three that don't come out until later this month and then in September, and then I will conclude with the books that I already own. Um, so the first book that I think I would give five stars to is called After the Ink Dries by Cassie Gustafson. And it does not come out until July 20th, so just a few more days. But this is a YA book and it's another hard hitting YA book. Trigger warnings for assault in that book. Um, I have heard other people say that they really enjoyed it. I've heard other people say that they didn't enjoy it. I guess it really all depends on your tolerance level. But this is about a girl named Erica who is 16 and she is an artist. She likes to do like graphic, kind of like graphic novels, things like that. Um, and she is currently dating a lacrosse player named Thomas. Well, one night they go to a party and she wakes up at this party half clothed with um, words um, on her body, different words, different names, just written all over her body, names of lacrosse players and names of her, even her best friend's boyfriend who's on the lacrosse team, his name's on there. She thinks that Thomas had nothing to do with it, but then she ends up finding his name. So it's kind of like her coming to grips with what happened and it's told in alternating views. And it also has mixed media involved with it. Um, she has an alter ego, which she writes through her graphic novels. Um, if you have ever read like Eliza and her monsters, um, it's kind of got like that feel to it with like in between the chapters or like graphic designs from like her web design and stuff like that. 
So that's kind of the feel of it. But even though it's like hard hitting and I think that, you know, it's a sensitive topic and things like that, I would still enjoy it. I always tend to really enjoy the hard hitting YA novels more than like the gushy, like contemporary romance novels. But that's just me. I'm dark. I'm damaged. It's just what is what it is. Um, but yeah, so that is the first one that I think would be a five stars for me. The second book is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson and this is a YA thriller, psychological thriller slash horror. That one is coming out September 14th and it is said to be a cross between The Haunting of Hill House and Get Out. I loved Get Out and The Haunting of Hill House scared me. <laughs> so just, you know, the jump scare scared me. I don't like the whole show scared me. Just the jump scare scared me. <laughs> but I still really enjoy it. So I really think I'll enjoy this one. This one is about a girl named Marigold who is in this blended family, this new kind of like, you know, blended family. She has a new stepsister and things like that. And they're moving from their small beach town in California to a Midwestern town. And the house that they move into, while it looks all good from, you know, our eyes, I guess, <laughs> um, inside is a whole different story. You know, things start happening. There's nasty smells. You know, it's your typical, I would assume, ghost story. I'm assuming that's what it is because of the whole Hill House, like, you know, similarity, but also Get Out, which has nothing to do with ghosts. So we shall see. But I know this is on a lot of people's list to be like an uh, anticipated release, but I definitely think this would be like a five star for me. The next book comes out September 28th and it is called The Seven Visitations of Sydney Burgess and it is by Andy Marino and this is a new debut novel for this um, author and it is a horror slash psychological thriller. Um, this girl is in her house and she has a home invasion and the police and everyone say that she ended up killing the intruder but she has no memory whatsoever of that happening. She does not remember a thing. She doesn't remember killing anybody, anything like that. And as she goes back home, um, you also wonder is she a reliable narrator because she is nine years sober but as things, events start to unfold, old addictions start creeping back in. She starts to remember things, but is it how it really happened? Or is, you know, is she remembering things the way it's supposed to be? So it sounds really good. And I have never heard of this author brand new, but I was just like, like I said, scrolling through, um, what did I see this on? It must've been like a Goodreads giveaway. And I was like, that sounds really interesting. But then I started reading, really reading into it. And I'm like, that sounds really interesting. So yeah, that definitely sounds like a five star for me. And then the rest of the books I'm gonna talk about, I own. So I will get to them right now. The next one on my list is one that I'm sure everyone and their mother has read because I'm a slow reader and I just get to things way, way later than everyone else. But that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This has been on my TBR once, twice, maybe five times on my channel, I don't know. But this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid who has written Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six, you know the drill, all these great books. No, I have not read this one yet. But in my mind, she's a five star because of just hearing everyone else say that it's a five star. This is about Evelyn Hugo and I'm pretty sure she's an actress and she's had like this incredible like love life of all these different husbands, I assume, seven of them to be exact, but it's kind of like she's giving like her life story. She's older now and she's just recounting everything that's happened. I see a man in your life. What, only one? Um, but I hear it's great. I would just like to read it and just say that I've read it just because I have FOMO. I need to know. I need to know why everyone loves it so much. Um, the next book is none other then Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. This is currently my current read. So I wanted to go ahead and I say current read, I mean like I am on page one. So that's how far I got into it. But I've heard nothing but good things. I have never read Penelope Douglas before. I don't know how she writes. I am purely going off of what other people have said on this book. I do know that it is a 
age gap romance between this girl and her ex-boyfriend's father. <laughs> Scandalous! I just, I don't know why I love that, but I love that. Um, but I just would always prefer to date older guys growing up. It's just a thing. Um, but yeah, I've heard she's steamy and I like my steam. This one is also on the list. Not to be outdone by none other than Katie Robert and Neon Gods. This is another five-star prediction only because I know that I love Katie Robert books. It's just, I, she's like a, if she like, you know how like, if they build it, they will come? If you build it, he will come. If she writes it, I will buy it. That's, that's how it goes. Um, I love her writing. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. This is the first in like four or five books she's doing for this series. So, um, I'm so excited. Have I read the Wicked Villain series yet? No, don't ask. Don't, you know, don't ask me. We know how it is on this channel, but her steam is, so I know if this is not a five star, someone can like come and like, Put me out of my misery because what do you mean it's not going to be a five star the next book that i believe will be a five star is the push by ashley audrain now listen kids are great kids are fantastic as long as they're not my kids okay i <laughs> i don't want them they're nice i don't want them though no. um but this book is about a mother who has a child. Normal, right? No, no, not normal. See, for her, she just doesn't have that, like, that bond with this child. Um, when it's born, she kind of thinks like, okay, is it me? Is it the child? Like, it's her daughter that I'm talking about here. She ends up having another child as well, who's a boy, and that connection's great. She connects with that one, everything's fine. So she's to believe that there's something wrong with her daughter. There's just something terribly wrong, okay? And then this accident, something terrible happens in their family, and she just kind of has to come to terms with, okay, is this all in my head? Is my child really the spawn of Satan? I don't know. But I've heard that if you want kids, don't read this book. If you have kids, don't read this book. If you're pregnant, don't read this book. Honestly, I'm not pregnant. I don't want kids and I don't have kids. So I'm the perfect candidate to read this book. But I'm just, I, I have to read it because I want to know what the incident is. And I want to know, like, part of me thinks, like, is it a metaphor for, like, postpartum depression? Maybe I'm getting too, like, deep into this. Maybe her child just is Spawn of Satan. I don't know. We shall find out. And the last five star prediction is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. And this is a revenge story. Revenge is a dish that is best served cold. Outright revenge story. This is about a professor who also is a serial killer. She goes after men who has done wrong to others. Kind of think of like Promising Young Woman, but better. Because if you've seen Promising Young Woman, you know, that the ending sucked. And I've heard that this does not suck like the ending of that movie because the movie was great. It was great until the ending and then it just, no, it wasn't. But this definitely, I don't know what it is about serial killers in me. I don't know, we get along. I like reading about them. I like watching them. I'm, I'm just weird. But I have heard that this one, as Gabby Reads has read this, she says it's really good and I can't remember if Riley Marie has read it also but because she always talks about it but I just can't remember if she's read it but I'm going to take their word for it that this will also be a five-star read but yeah guys that is it that is my list of five-star predictions I'm sure I have more but frankly I couldn't think of any more books to put down and I wasn't scrolling through my 300 plus TBR list on Goodreads to do so so let me know down below have you read any of these were these five stars for you or what are some of your predictions for some five stars in your future um i love talking to you guys down in the comments if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias they are always linked down below for you guys along with my amazon wish list if you ever would like to support the channel or if you would like me to read one of your favorite books you can send it to me because i don't have enough books to read as it is but if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new i would love to have you stick around and i will see you all in the next one
Bye guys. Today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys. Oh my gosh, why? It's only 15 miles per hour on that street, crazy people. You are kidding me. What was I saying? Uh, this book is, is, oh my gosh, one more time. I'm so, I'm, Charlie, I'm trying to film. Oh, my neighbors are so entertaining. Would you like to film this video instead? Because I think we all have a little bit of daddy issues. Every, everyone's got them sometimes. Don't care who you are. If she writes it, they will come. <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say that. Do you hear my chair? It's like pissing me off. Okay. Stop moving, Katie, and it won't make a sound. And assume that this will also be a five reads. Five reads? No, it's not. You are so stupid. Um, but if you like this, if you like this channel, it's not that. <laughs> I'm giving up.